Hey friends and neighbors, this is Pastor Kenny Lee coming to you with Friday's devotional time. I hope that you've had a good week this week as we look forward to a weekend. I know that in our area there's significant amounts of rain that are forecast. There'll be a lot of farmers that'll be happy about that, be able to turn the irrigation pivots off and let Mother Nature do her work. I hope that as you prepare for the weekend that you're I'm excited about getting a little rest and relaxation. I know that my family and I are as well. Uh, we look forward to worship on Sunday, but let's um, center ourselves in this moment, being present with um, God through the power of God's Holy Spirit as we seek to hear and understand His Word. I want to invite you to pray with me. Holy God, we thank you for the quiet of this sanctuary. We thank you for this opportunity that we are afforded today to be in your presence. God, we open ourselves before you knowing that you alone can help us to hear your word. That you alone, Lord, extend the grace and the mercy that we need every day. That you alone can open our hearts and minds and lives to your word, Lord, your amazing word. We ask that your spirit would move freely in this time, that you would enlighten and enliven your people as we seek to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture passage comes to us from the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, and I'll begin reading with verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecute persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, to which we respond, thanks be to God. This is a beautiful passage of scripture in which Paul reminds us of Jesus' place, his preeminent Place as he is seated at the right hand of God the Father where he makes intercession for the saints day and night, Scripture tells us. This same Jesus who walked the dusty roads of Palestine in a historical place at a historical time is also known to be God's own Son, the Son whom God gave up for us. God's love for us is so high and wide and deep that He didn't withhold anything from us, even His own Son, that He gave Himself up for us in order that we might be reconciled to God. And because of that great love, because of God's mercy and this gift of salvation that He's offered to us, all the obstacles between us and God's immediate personal presence have been have been completely obliviated. There's nothing that can stand between us and the love of God in Christ. There's nothing in this created world, even in terms of the spiritual world, not, not angels or demons or any other power can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you folks, but for me, that sounds like pretty good news. Like, as I walk every day, as I live in the power of victory that God has given me, as I 
continue to listen for God to speak into my life and into the life of other people, as I listen to other voices to hear God speak to us, I understand that He never leaves us or forsakes us. And that where two or three are gathered together, that He's there as well. And, and that as long as we pray in agreement with God's will, that nothing will be withheld from us. Because He gave everything in order that we might be made right before God. What a beautiful way to conclude our week in Scripture. Our hymn today is a virtual choir rendition of Thine Be the Glory. This is a beautiful Easter hymn. Let's listen together. Beautiful. As we conclude our time together for today and for this week, I just want to remind you that we'll be doing parking lot worship here at Marvel United Methodist Church on Sunday. Uh, we will have a virtual worship service uploaded by Saturday evening that we'll post out on Facebook around church time on Sunday. So if that's the way that you choose to be connected to our congregation this week, just be prepared um, to see that. We hope to see folks on Sunday morning and we're praying that we get a window of opportunity for parking lot worship. Um, barring any major thunderstorms, I think we can probably be feel free that, or feel confident that that's going to be a good time together. 
Let's pray together as we conclude our time. Holy God, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful metaphor, this beautiful passage of scripture that we have shared together today. God, we're thankful people, grateful for the love of God in Christ that, that connects us with one another and with your Son and with you, O oh God. We pray today that your Holy Spirit be alive and at work in our lives. God, we pray today that we would reach somebody for Christ in order that Christ might be better known and loved in our homes, our neighborhoods, and our community. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I look forward to seeing you all again on Monday. Have a great week.